God. Abraham left a blessing to Isaac and to Jacob and all of Israel got blessed because of his faithfulness and him serving God. And God says, not only do you serve me, but you love others. See, Abraham prayed for Lot. Abraham prayed for his relatives and the people that the grace of God would save them from the sins. Show them that there's a better life. There's a better existence. There's a, a new life. That the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And we, we shared this last week that the law was powerless. It didn't give me strength to live right. I desire to do that which is good, to do that which is right, but in me is no strength, no power, no ability, and no desire outside of God. So the law and my religion can't change me, can't give me joy or peace, but Jesus, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. And now I have the new life. I have a new life. I have a freedom. I remember when I was young, I, I was fearful in a lot of ways, very shy, and it was like I was in a cage. And I says, when am I going to get free from this fear and intimidation? And I, I, I finally, when I received the Lord, I became free. He who the Son makes free is free indeed. I learned to enjoy life. I learned to be who God created me to be because I receive a new empowerment, a new love. You see, when you're loved, you can live life freely. You can express yourself because you're not fearful of being rejected. Love, you've become accepted in Christ. There's a, when you're loved, you, you treat others better. You treat others like you want to be treated. And that's why it says the greatest commandment is to love one another, to love God and to love one another as yourself and to treat others with the same care and tenderness and you come to know God. When you experience God, you come into this new freedom, a new way of expressing yourself. You're not living a selfish life, just worried about yourself, but as you learn to pray for others, you'll see the provision and the blessing of God is upon your life because how can you be a blessing to others unless I first bless you? You know, it's like my son. Unless I put clothes on him and I feed him, how can I expect him to go out and enjoy life or to work or anything? God takes care of your basic, simple needs. He, he dresses you. He feeds you. He strengthens you. He loves you. He makes you feel good about himself. See, the spirit life lets you know that your father loves you and he cares about you and he's going to make everything better and you're going to have a sense of worth, a sense of value. You're going to feel important because you're loved and because you're loved and you know and now you experience this new life you're going to learn to love others. You're going to learn to treat others. You're not worried about taking care of yourself. Just It's all about me. But now you start reaching out. You start extending yourself to be a blessing to others. And by extending yourself, you open yourself up to the full blessing of God. God says, I'll enrich your life and I'll make you the head and not the tail. I'll be the breath and the wings of the winds under your wings. I'll lift you up into new realms and give you greater authority. God wants to bring us into a new promotion. I see promotion to coming to many people in the church, to many people that are seeking God in provision. God is not worried about the economy. The abundance and the provision of God is coming upon those who will call upon His name. Not seeking to be rich in themselves, but to honor God and to be a blessing to other people. There's a provision and there's a strength. God wants us to be an example, a blessing. God wants us to release and empower others by your example. It says, you know, Paul says, I don't speak enticing words of man's wisdom, but I speak in the power and in the demonstration. When I speak life to people, all of a sudden, 
they can stand up. They can start doing what they couldn't do before. They find themselves where they failed in life. All of a sudden, there's a new spirit of excellence. There's a new empowerment. They're able to succeed. And the thoughts, the creativity that God gives you is now flowing freely in you because you're His creation. His love and His life lives in you and He breathes. The Bible talks about that He'll quicken and make alive that which is dead. The Spirit quickens us and He makes alive. So meaning, He's going to quicken our minds that we think. And that's what happens with me at work. My mind just quickens and I start remembering things. And I know it's not in my own abilities, but it's the Spirit of God that quickens me and makes me a better person. It makes me mindful. I have a right mind to help people to be a blessing, to share the joy, to share the good news, to be like a song. It's like a, our lives are like a song, an expression of God's love. And we sing it with our hearts. We sing it with our mouths. We sing it with our smiles and our lanterns. You know, it's not just a, a melody, but it's a sweet savor unto God because we glorify Him by our lies by our actions, the way we care for one another, the way we speak a blessing. We speak the promises of God. We don't look at failure. We're not speaking words of condemnation and failure, but we see the promise. We see the ability, the hidden talent, the treasure, the riches of Christ that, that's dwelling in me and He's releasing it into the people of God. That now you're rich. You're made rich through his poverty, through his death on the cross, the resurrected life of Christ now dwells in us. Before we were poor and we couldn't barely live our own lives, but now through the resurrection and the new spirit life in Christ Jesus, we come into a richness. We become the expression of the living God. Christ dwells within us. The expressed image of God. And it's a mystery. I'm coming to know Him day after day in a greater way. We, we eat daily. We need to renew our strength, renew our minds daily in the Word of God. Just as the people had to go out daily and God fed them the manna. God is going to feed you daily. His mercies are new every morning. And I know some of your mothers are struggling. You don't see how the provision is going to come, how are you going to provide for the children at this time? But God's saying, cast your cares upon me and I'll cause the ravens, I'll cause the blessings and the provision, the food, the finances, the heat to be turned back on in your, in your apartment and in your homes. God is going to make a way. Just open yourself up to the expression. Live in expectation. Just call upon the Lord. Says, Lord, I have a need of you. Lord, just answer my needs and save my family and just restore them, Lord. They've, they've, they've been in trouble. They've been in jail. But God, I know you have a plan. You have a purpose for their lives. And I speak the blessings of God. I break the power of Satan, the, the influence of this world. I break the powers of darkness. And I speak the purposes of God, the calling and the plan of God. God has a plan for good.